Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to One, Mi One World Mind Seminar this week. Uh, so today it's my great pleasure to have uh, Professor Zhou Wei Shen to speak in this seminar. Uh, Professor Shen is currently the Chen, Chuan, Chen Zhen Chuan uh, Centennial uh, Professor at the Department of Mathematics, National University of Singapore. Uh, Professor Shen is a leading expert in computational harmonic analysis, um, approximation theory, wavelet theory, time frequency analysis, um, imaging science, um, and machine learning. Professor Shen has won numerous awards and honors. He is currently a SIAM, a fellow, AMS fellow, and a, a fellow at the um, World Academy of Science. Uh, he has published over 150 research papers and uh, several books, and he has al also serving or has served on several editorial boards, including a science journal on uh, imaging science, mathematical analysis, ACHA, mathematic, mathematics of computation. So today he will talk about uh, deep approximation by deep learning. So now it's, the stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Su Yang for your uh, the committee for the invitation. Uh, today, today I'm going to talk about the appro approximation of a, of a deep neural network. So uh, I will start with from that uh, uh, basic approximation theory and uh, how 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 does that connect to the deep learning? And uh, the uh, the key con connection is you feel the approximation uh, deep neural net approximation of the function and uh, approximation uh, approximation of functions by compositions. And this is a is a, a new point of view, and it's a, it is a different from a traditional approximation. And the, uh, the traditional approximation is basically additive, but uh, the deep neural network, the key power is the composition. And uh, I will talk- Hi, uh, uh, Hi Professor uh, Shen, I, I, we cannot see the slides. So could you share this again? But somehow you, it's not working. You we cannot, cannot see, see the slide? Yeah, so- uh, Let me share again then. Ah, now, yeah, now it works. Okay. Okay, so, Then, uh, after I talk about the uh, approximation of a function by the compositions, then I will talk about a uh, uh, rather technical part about approximate, uh, approximated approximation load uh, by the neural network is actually in terms of the width and the depth. So I was so for if you are if we are working on a mathematical foundation for the deep neural network, I think it is very good uh, in a sense, you don't need to justify the application. Okay, the, for the deep neural network, the application is a profound. And uh, for the, there are many examples in technology and the industry. For example, computer, computer vision, you know that the driver's car, success of the driver's car is based on this. And the machine translation, okay, this uh, all kind of maybe you already use the language translation also based on deep learning. And also game player, uh, like a famous example is the uh, AlphaGo, uh, which can play Go game and uh, can win the best player in the world. So then machine learning also push the science forward. Okay, we all know that uh, in many science, Everybody in the beginning of, from the beginning of science, many, many of science based on the observe and the collect data and through the data that analysis, you try to find the natural rule and the truth. Now your machine learning, they provide one of the, machine learning providers is the most advanced, advanced data analysis. So it will, I think it will push the science forward, but at the same time, the, uh, machine learning offers more than that because uh, it is possible to, through the learning, you can improve the model because of another part of science, you, 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 you set up so, a good model. So, so sorry cannot, to interrupt, we cannot see the screen again somehow. Oh, okay, this one you cannot see. Okay, yes. that's good. That's what you can see. Yes, yes, this, this work fine. Okay, okay, let me work this way. Okay, so, so the, you, you, through the learning, you can also kind of improve the model. You also kind of maybe through the learning, you can learn the new model. 
Okay, this uh, this uh, this area so that we're using machine learning to conduct science research is expanding very fast. I give you here just a one example for the like a condensed condensed matter. This this is the area. I'm not working in this area, but I look at the paper. Okay, I look at the paper in this area, and the title, which the title of the paper has words like learning. This is, this is exponentially growth. That means you see, you have a lot of potential to apply the machine learning to the science. science. Okay, the machine learning is, a new, is not a new concept. Okay, it, it was around for a long time. So this is, uh, uh, but traditional classical machine learning we call sh shallow learning. And the, the, the deep neural network, that's the, the key the, here is deep. What's the difference? The cl classical shallow kind of, a classical kind of machine learning neural network, it's basically, as I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's a additive. Basically, it's a subspace kind of approximation. If you, you are, if you, you feel the approximation is not good enough, you add the generator. Add more generator, then uh, uh, expand your subspace and get a better approximation. And the deep neural network, you still have the concept for this additivity. But more importantly, importantly you through the composition, you, you basically through the composition, you, you increase the power of the generator and the, the, the power of the approximation of the generator. I think that's the key difference. So also when you have a you have a you have a, this uh, deep neural network, you have a more minimal flexibility and it can de design all kinds of architecture for a different kind of application. And you have a, a kind of balance between the depth and the width. In some sense, the width is basically depend on the is like an additivity part component. Width means how big your subspace is in some sense, but depth means how powerful your generator are. So generator generators are. So that, that's to combine the balance between the two to, to get your uh, get the uh, achievement you, you want to have. So so this is the also, you can think about the, the you think about the human human learning process in the elementary level. It, it is additive. Okay, okay. You, you accumulate a lot knowledge and uh, slowly get more knowledge. And uh, but at, at the high level learning, it's a composition. Like okay, like a graduate students when they learn, they are more on the composition. So hopefully, the knowledge they have they can come compose to a high level knowledge and even discover discovery of the no, new knowledge. But, but the issue is whether, whether this composition, now we, we, we understand the composition transfer to the high power of approximation, whether this really transfer to how power of learning, especially for supervised learning, that is still, I think, the new subject to study. So what, what, what we are doing, what, are we are, uh, uh, what kind of questions we address here? This is the hypothesis space. That's basically generated by your new neural network. Okay, so here is your, uh, is your target function. You want to approximate, approximate. Okay, so so if approximation error essentially means the distance. If you have a distance, you define distance between the functions. Is the shortest distance between the target function and your hypothesis space, which is generated by your neural network. Okay, so because you want to make the shortest distance, you normally you have, you, have op, you have go through the optimization. You, you want to do the uh, optimization that minimize the distance. Okay, so if you, if you have any algorithm, you will get the, at the end, you have to learn that because this hypothesis space is, de, is decided by the set of a parameter. So you basically learn the model, you learn the model, you basically learn the parameter. Okay, you get the, the get the learn the model. So the learn the model, of course, is a numerical solution, which is what? Which are the, as I say, you are, you, are, you are doing the minimization. But the actually minimization your 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 risk function or your 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 cost function is not really like uh, your original this uh, best uh, model. It is an empirical model because you do, for the best model you need a function. 
to available to compute. But in, in real life, you don't have a function. You only have a data of the function. So that, that means that you get a get an empirical risk. Okay, so for this model, either you, with your real best model, you also have error. This is a generalization error. So for the deep learning, especially for the supervised learning, you basically have a three error to analyze. One is optimization error, and uh, this is basically addressed by many people working in optimization. One is uh, generalization error, that is the, your empirical, the, I, I would say that's the error of the model, your empirical model, empirical model and your real model, your, your best model. Okay, this statistical learning essentially estimate this approximation is about this distance. Okay, in the literature, you can see many people mix these three errors, but here I want to separate these three. And today, I mainly address this approximation error. Okay. Uh, later, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more and see why this is important. Okay, let's talk about the approximation now. So approximation is very, is very, has a long history. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. if you want to talk about any numerical solution, you will talk about approximation. So approximation basically for a given function, okay, uh, so the function, you want to use some simple function to approximate. That means the functions, the function are easy for you to deal with, okay? So such that the, 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 to approximate means the error in certain norm, norm certain, uh, certain uh, distance you define is in certain norm so small than epsilon, okay? Your, fun, your G can be very simple, G doesn't, uh, F can be from RD to R, your G can be RN to R. Okay, it don't need to be the same, N and D should not be, uh, and G can be as simple as linear, okay? So you think about it, for this one to make sense, even if for the D equal to one, you want to make it make sense, you want to make it make some sense, you're basically using line to approximate the curve. It's not, most, most time it doesn't work. So therefore, you need some uh, some map, some some map T, T map from R D to R N such that the F a G composed with T have a good automation. Okay. So of course, uh, as I say, in the reality, you don't have an F available. Okay, if I F available, you uh, it's uh, life is easy. So most of the time, and the simplest case, you have a sum of the value. Okay. Sample value, sample data available. Okay, sometimes even you don't have that. You have your, your, your data available is, a, is, a, is a given in a other much more complex form. Okay, so for example, in for the differential equation or something, like that. but this is a simple case see that you have a data available. Okay, you want to find, a, find F. Okay, so classical approximation essentially T is independent F, is given our data. Okay, the, 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 the why is your N? It depends on your epsilon. Okay, you have a you want a small epsilon, you have to have a bigger n. Okay, and in the uh, classical learning, you are, you learn t. Okay, classical learning they st already start to learn t, but somehow the t they only parameterize in a fairly few number of parameters. Okay, in a small number of parameter, you have to learn t. That's the classical learning. The deep learning, you are basically completely open the t. Okay, but also the further decompose T to many, many layer and the completely parameterize it and to learn this T. Okay, let's give the, the more examples, say, give us some examples. For class, most classical approximation is a linear approximation. Linear approximation is very simple. I gave you, as I said, I gave you a set of generators. Okay, and you want to, you know, the, 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 for the, because this is generally given, your, your T is given. T is essentially this way, okay? Your G is linear. Most people use it linear. So the, 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 the approximation, basically you find a, find a G, G composed with find this way. That's all your parameter is just N parameter, okay? You have an N parameter and that's all. Okay, that's linear because of this property. Then another, another classical approximation is a so-called the best n-term approximation. That means 
your, your in stable, you have an n generator, you have a dictionary. Dictionary is huge, much bigger than n, can also can be infinity. Okay, you have a big dictionary, and your t is still fixed. If you're giving a dictionary, your t is fixed. But here, the difference is that you only among the dictionary, you choose only n term. That means your a, a is a sequence, but your support of a only have n non zero terms. Okay, you choose the best n term approximation. It's, a, it's, a, it's also called nonlinear, sometimes people call nonlinear approximation because this is a, you don't have a linear property. So, the, 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 so, so for example, you, if you have an orthogonal basis, so linear approximation basically uh, you choose the first n, to, uh, n generator and your best approximation in L2 norm is just orthogonal projection. This is the, this is the inner product, okay? So, so you you so you think about this. This, uh, this uh, want to if you want to have a good approximation approximation for t or for for f, the uh, condition is very simple. Your this sequence should be decay very fast. Okay, this sequence they will call Fourier coefficient or whatever. Yeah, you think about this. If we, it, it, most of all reasonable like wavelet basis Fourier basis using at the orthogonal basis, then you can think about this is decay of this sequence implies the regularity or smoothness of your F. Okay, therefore the linear approximation is good for the smooth function. Okay, so the smoother the function is, you have a better approximation because it decay fast. But this is a, this is a, is a very good approximation, uh, good approximation scheme if D is very small. Okay, very small, I mean the D is one or two or three or something like that. Okay, the domain is simple. Okay, the disadvantage is when D is big, uh, it's a, it's a, it cannot handle this one. And also uh, uh, your function is not smooth. Uh, this, uh, this scheme does not work. Okay, N term is, uh, you look at the same thing is that you, you, have a, you have a T, now you have a orthonormal basis. What the N term, instead of you have a chunk to the first N term, you, if you if you have a actually have all the coefficient, you choose the biggest n first n coefficient. Okay, the, the, so that's the n term of summation. So this one because uh, because you always choose the uh, biggest one the first, you choose by order. So the decay requirement is uh, much relaxed compared with the linear approximation. That's why this best n term n term of approximation can approximate well for the, instead of a smooth function, the kind of approximate very well for piecewise smooth function. Okay, so not so smooth function. So, so like a wavelet, I, 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 I'm working on wavelet for a long time. So wavelet approximation is essentially non-linear approximation and a best n term approximation. So although this is gave you, this is why, this is why wavelet is very good and very, become a very useful tool for image processing because most of our image is not only piecewise smooth, it is piecewise constant. So wavelets in term observation serves that better, very good. However, this still face the same problem. You are, you are, if your D is good or big and the domain is complex, it, it does not work, okay. Okay, now look at, look at, look at what the approximation of the deep neural network. Your deep neural level work is a, is, a, is a function phi, which is parameterized by that data, a set of parameters, huge number of parameters. Okay, your, your learning, your basic learning is a set of parameters. So this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this neural network can be understand of the G, this is called the final layer, and also this is hidden layer, T. The T can be further decomposed for many, many layers. These are hidden layers. Each G is a TI is a hidden layer. So each, each T is simple. Each TJ is simple. Each TJ is a composition of the two functions, essentially. Okay, first of all, alpha and map. You have an alpha and map. W is a matrix, and BJ is a vector. So the alpha and map, then you follow with some nonlinear activating function. The activating function applied to the, to the factor is a component, component wise. Okay. So, so the key here, your W, your B, 
is the prim our parameters. Okay, you, you the, the, the learning is a learning parameter. So you have a, start, a big set of parameter. Machine learning is a much learn this set of parameters. Okay, this is the example neural network. So now what's the what's the arrows? Okay, so look at that. if you fix a set of theta, you kind of can compute this arrow. That is the if we if you have a distance, this is this is the expectation of a distance between this function you learned out and between your f. Okay, well. This uh, so so this uh, this uh, this uh, the distribution is your data distribution. Most time it's unknown. Okay. For example, if you assume you're using Euclidean distance and using U as a uniform kind of distribution, this uh, this uh, R D basically is a L two L two arrow of this one. Okay. So ideally, you are learn. Machine learning, learning what? Supervised learning is basically learn the parameter theta d, make this one to be the minimum. So ideally, well, it's as simple as that. Okay, machine learning is basically you have to learn this parameter uh, parameter theta d, make this one to be minimum. Practically, you have a problem. Practically, there, as I said, you 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 you, you, you don't unavailable for f. You don't have f, and you don't even don't know this. Uh, Distribution. So, however, what do we have? We normally have samples. You give a sample, and so therefore you have a sample instead of samples. We supposedly it's a draw from the underlying distribution. So instead, what you you started uh, uh, to minimize that you minimize R S instead of R D. That's the called the empirical empirical risk. Okay. So, so this is this is this is what it is. Okay, this is the the, the the one. Then your 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 algorithm is the find in argument of this. Okay, minimize this. Okay, that's what it is. However, as I said, this is the this is the, this is the. It can be it can be in, implemented, but the problem here, this uh, this uh, optimization problem is still. Highly uh, non-convex, so it's still hard. So it doesn't matter. You you have some numerical scheme. Suppose you get the solution. Solution will may not get ZS. That is data N. Data N is your numerical solution. So what we are interested in is once you have a data N, you have a phi zeta. Okay, you have a phi zeta N. So you are, you want to you want to know the arrow. So arrow for this case, you have a data N fix. Your function, your neural net fix, your function fix. So this is the arrow you want to find. Okay, theoretically, uh, that's what you want to. But this arrow can be bounded by three. This is you got to the simple calculation. You can go to this. Uh, this part is we call the model arrow. Okay, uh, this, this is the, your best model. This is the distance between your target function and the hypothesis space. This is the distance between target function and hypothesis. This is the exactly optimization arrow. This is the generalization arrow. Okay, so. So look at that. So you, you, you look at all this, then your, 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 our approximation theory, what do we give? We give the upper bound for this one, okay? That's, that's the main result for this paper. Oh, this talk, this talk, we are talking about how do we estimate upper bound for this. Or at least we, whether we have a, for any epsilon, you do have a, this kind of be smaller than epsilon. That's called the universal approximation property. And this is the optimization error. And this is normally called generalization error. Okay. Say if you don't if, if you don't have this to be bounded, if you don't, don't decide, doesn't matter how do you minimize this error and minimize this error, that's only tells you what. That only tells you, your theory only tells you, you have a good error estimate when your target function is in your hypothesis space. If you want to talk about a, your, your, your function, your target function, you want to, if you want to talk about your target function with the out of a target uh, hypothesis space, you must have an estimate for this error. So our contribution is give you the bound for this. Okay. 
this is a, a, I hope that the, we connect the approximation to the deep learning. Now we talk about approximation of a function because we are talking about, I talk about a lot of the compositions. So let's, let's do about the compositions. So we start from, a, so given a set, okay? You want to a key, key for deep learning. In fact, you are learning the T, your T is a parameter of T and G, G, G also you can learn. For, the, for example, G is linear, you have a parameter A to learn, parameters A is to learn. So, the, in fact, you learn a T, T that in fact you can consider as a, cha a, a change variable. You basically, you simplify the domain of F and arrange it so that, uh, so that this is, but I still want to key, a key feature of the F being kept so that your G composed with T can be used to approximate F. So forget about, uh, forget about the deep learning, so, so mathematically, what is the mathematics behind? This, this is a mathematical problem. Okay, T, you don't need to think about the, the neural network. It's a, it's a map. So what are the mathematical problem behind? Of course, first question you can ask, if I give you F and G, is there a measurable function T such that F can be equal to G composed with T? Answer is yes. In fact, you, we can prove that if we are given our uh, given f and g, uh, you have an assumption that the image that the range of g covers range of m f. This uh, you must have. If this is not cover, you can you cannot uh, recover f for sure. And g is continuous. In fact, we don't need the g is continuous. We can be even weak. We just the level set of g is close is good enough. Then you always can have a measurable map t such that this happen f equal to g composed with t. Okay, this is good. That, so that means that you solve the everything. You always have a T. The problem here is that the proof we give is not constructive, it's an existent proof, okay? So we don't have a constructive approve, approve for this T. We have a existent, they, they exist T, okay, for sure. So if you, then we, we okay, you can, if, we, if it, we ask another question, is there for actually given epsilon, can we construct, okay, measurable function f, a, a t, such that smaller than epsilon? The answer is also yes. A condition even weak. You just need a, need a this cover, a range of a, g cover range of f, you can have, a, for aperture epsilon, you can have a measurable. This way, you can construct it, okay? Yeah, that the t is constructive. Basically, you're given the f, I can write out the t, okay? So that, so that was the problem. Then everything is solved. There's still, uh, uh, okay, you, you're given an F, I can write T, and uh, you're given F and epsilon, I can write T, make, make it happen. The problem is that you don't have an F. You only have a data, you have a sample set, sample of the F. So if we, the, the sample of the F, then you can, uh, my next question is, can you have a decompose T first? Yeah, uh, give it, get a T such that, you, uh, you have a small than epsilon and you can have an algorithm to find this t. Okay, this, uh, this is uh, the next question. This is uh, this also durable, okay? This also, uh, also, also durable and uh, we have a uh, proof and also we have an algorithm. The algorithm is uh, pretty simple in the sense, okay, we have an algorithm of the basically essential two steps. The first step, you, you, if you have a, you, you, it's a it, it is an iterative algorithm, and uh, the, the, you, you, you can start, start with F0, and if you, if you have a G, if I FG, you want how to design FG plus one. So you first, have, uh, the, you have a two small neural net, okay, we kind of design a two very small neural network. The, so neural net, uh, so small one, each, this first one, to identify from your sample data, which is not good. That's the that, bad point. That is the point does not provide your approximation requirement. Then second one is that you, you retrain it. Retrain what? Retrain the bad point. Your good points, you stay. Bad points. So there's a third, this is, this is, you do this. So then you iterate, okay? Yeah, the, the, uh, you forget about the notation. The idea is very simple. 
the, the key point is that uh, the, the, the each of these uh, uh, small new, uh, net, net they can be small, they don't either have a high accuracy, but you continue iteration, you can get a, at the end, you can get a very good one. That's the key point. So this will give a, for any given uh, approximate, you can do the algorithm systematically and uh, you kind of improve the error dramatically. Then uh, people will always ask the question, when do we stop? You can go on forever. So, so here is a, we have a way to stop, we have a criteria to stop. This is a, this is a, this is the arrow for the K plus J plus one step. This is the arrow for the J step. So the arrow of the J plus one step is equal to arrow of the J step and multiply this uh, number. Okay, you don't need to worry about uh, uh, the, all these number RAP. RAP, we have in the paper, we do have an exact mathematical definition for those RAP. Furthermore, these are all RAP can be estimated at each stage in the K stage. Okay, so if you can do that, then the life will become much simpler. What do you do? You have this, uh, this three number. If you look at this, this not magic number is small than one, that means you can continue. Because if it's small than one, you, you more, you more, one more iterate, you will, you will reduce the error. Okay, that's as simple as that. Okay, so, so, so once this number is equal to one or beyond, or bigger than one, you just stop, okay. So we you can do, do, we look at when we look at the numeric result for this uh, iterative each this uh, do have uh, some kind of okay I'm doing multi uh, this uh, wavelength so it's, uh, do have a kind of multi what are each FG what are you get do have uh, some multi scale structure like uh, okay cost level approximation come back first then slowly slowly details come come in okay. Okay, this is uh, okay. This uh, we we do this uh, the, the, just a uh, test uh, 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 whether this concept works. This is the eminence and the fashion eminence. Uh, okay, this is the, uh, you have a set of arts of results. Okay, set of arts results is so good. Almost nobody can beat it. Okay, the, so we are, we are not uh, aiming to beat them. Okay, we just test our, uh, we can't get as good as the result as what they did. But the key here is our, our neural net to, is very small. Okay, you basically have a, have a depth is for a total four layer and your, your width is, is also small. Okay. Okay, so this, this one is, is about a regression. Regression you have to, uh, uh, we use the data, is a, this is the easy, easy case, okay. Okay, maybe for time I skip these, uh, these slides about the ideas. Uh, yeah, this, this is the paper, okay. I just want to mention this paper, okay. So next, now this is the, what we talk about is all about a function. So now we come back to the neural network. So neural network, so one, one of the most popular neural network is the residual network. Okay, residual network is, a, is, a, is, a, uh, is a one of the most widely used uh, networks. And we are, okay, the function theory, you cannot apply to that, but we want to see whether these residual network also have the same fashion of this kind of, the theoretical result for function we have. So here we 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 start the residual network is a, is a basically you can consider that your h is a, is divided by the okay for example you can h can be the any activating function but here we say is relu okay so that's so, so so your h is a parameter this is the fourth function is a para, parameterized okay then this is a discrete okay this is the, the deeper neural together you can make the continuous time idealization. That's become a become a, this uh, ODE, okay, dynamic system, okay. Connect the connect make the con connection between the residual nets and this uh, this uh, the, the dynamic system is not our contribution. It has done by other people and like uh, Weinan, Osha, all done that. Okay, many people done that this part. But what they did is basically for the uh, study of the algorithm. Okay, especially this uh, statistical, statistical uh, uh, the, the great decent uh, uh, algorithm. Okay, but what we, our contribution, we first connect this residual network and this uh, dynamic system in terms of approximation. Okay, so how do we do that? Basically, this dynamic system produces a T. Okay, what is T? So if you have, uh, yeah, yeah, basically TX, you have uh, the, the, your, 
your if your x zero to be to be x, your x tall is your t x. Then it is a flow map. Okay, your 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 basically is the flow map. The parameter the map is your t. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a, the key here. So then everything falls in naturally. So look at that. How do we take the composition? Because your t when you're at the time zone, you have the zero to tall. If you 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 you, you cut the time to small piece, this is natural. Htg is this. This is naturally composition. Your t the composition of this. Okay, it's a very very, very fit very natural. So so it's fit naturally. The, the next question you want to count, what kind of control function? There's a control family general by the your your your, your activating function and your parameter. Well, under what condition this one can be have a guarantee that your approximation? That's the question. You see, the theorem is here. It's very simple. You are, if you are either around D bigger than equal to two, and then your F is continuous for arbitrary concept, a compact set, your assumption for G is just a little Lipschitz. Okay, G you choose, and then you can easily choose the Lipschitz function G. Okay. okay. But uh, the, you still need the same condition. Your range of G should cover the range of the F. That's what you shouldn't still need. Then uh, my F, my F, I don't want to bother your technical uh, terminology. I tell you the F, you need to satisfy some condition, of course, but the condition is mild. I will tell you why it's mild. Okay, I still tell you what's the condition. Then for actually epsilon, you can have this. Uh, okay, this is important. Okay, your, 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 your T is from the flow map. Then you can come back. From here, you from a continuous idea generalization back to the discrete staging, you get a universal approximation property for the residueness. Okay, this is a straightforward. So now I'll tell you why I say this is a condition on the F is mild. Okay, in the in the in the, the uh, learning here, deep learning neural network, most popular activating functions that people use is first uh, the ReLU. Relo is very simple, piecewise linear. Okay, this is a simple function. Before zero is zero, and uh, after zero is x. Second one is a sigma. Okay, then the third one is a ta. Okay, this is a three function, the most popular function, uh, activating function used in neural network. But of course, most people only using Relo. Okay, but uh, why? Is because all all these three three functions, this Relo, your 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 generator is. Uh, I could, uh, F satisfies my condition. Okay, if you use sigma or the ta function, they also satisfy the uh, condition for my theorem. Furthermore, because the law, many of our residual nodes are residual, residual nets, they, they don't uh, each layer do this, they have a block structure. They have a, each block, then they move on this uh, uh, kind of iterative algorithm. So even for the block structure one, they also satisfy my condition on F. So, so that's good. That means our condition on F is not so, so technical. Okay, if D is the one, we don't have, a, okay, we'll really have a D. If D is the one, you only kind of do for the monotone function, okay? And, uh, if 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 uh, the, the, this approximation is out, okay, is a uh, is of course sufficient and not necessary, not necessary, but uh, it's a uh, it independent on architecture. So what kind of what kind of architecture you use? It's independent. Okay, only only the, you can use any uh, any of these three activating function. Even if you have any fancy fancy other activating function, you can check our condition. Maybe it's also okay. And uh, and the condition is the way. So the, the also you from as I said from a continuous time approximation, you can using the standard uh, you earlier 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 discretization, you can get a, get a, this a universal approximation property for residual network. Okay, now I, I think uh, I come to the uh, more technical part of my paper. That's the hard analysis. You want to say, given a neural net, okay, so this is, you have a given depth and width, what's the approximation rate? Okay, so this is all as here, most of the results is for ReLU network, okay. You have a for given a parameter for width called N and a parameter L for the depth, 
Okay, your real width and depth maybe is a linear function of n l, but but uh, so you can think that it's more or less like a, your width or your l. L is your depth. The question is, uh, what is the approximation rate for this uh, real network? Okay, approximation rate of for what class of function? It all depends on what class of function. What we are interested in is the first is the say, Lipschitz function. Okay. But for the Lipschitz function, your, your rate is that n to the power 2 over d and l to the power 2 over d. Okay, that's your rate. Okay, your, your, so we have exactly, exact, uh, we know exactly what's the width and what's the depth of the neural network. Oh, that's the rate. Okay, that's the exact, exact, this is exact. The technical part is you have to know exactly the width and the and the depth and the exact rate. Okay, that's that's a that's the uh, technical part. Of course, this uh, this uh, for Lipschitz. Of course, you can uh, do for the more general function like a continuous function. But a continuous function because uh, see, uh, of course you have to know the concept of the uh, module of a continuity. You can uh, characterize the approximation by module of a continuity. Okay, this is uh, for the Lipschitz. Your module of a continuity is basically bounded by this uh, this number. Okay. This, uh, this is what it is. And uh, if you are not happy with the this rate, the bad news is that the this rate is nearly optimal. That means you don't have much room to improve this rate. Okay. So, so many people have done this work. Now I'm, uh, we are not the first one to do this work. Okay. Uh, so for example, when n, big number, a or equal to one, so for L, that means you, are, you, are, you have a one layer, one layer kind of a fully connected network. That's the, that's the classical learning people normally do. Okay, rate is one over D. Okay, it's well known, it's well known, but if you, ch you check the literature, they only approve for D equal to one. For D bigger than one, nobody prove it. Okay, uh, I don't know the proof either, but I know for the D plus bigger than one, you cannot over that. For one layer, okay, you cannot over this layer, but I don't know everybody, anybody have a proof. Everybody says it's, 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 it's oh, they know it's, it's true, but nobody gave a proof. But for Yurovsky, he he did in 2018, he had a paper. He had a paper, he said, okay, if my, I fix my width, width is a D, D is your dimension, okay, 2D plus 10. Then he say he said, I have a rate, but the rate is asymptotic. In that you are, if your air big enough, you have a C rate. Okay, you have sufficient big air, you have that. What we did, we first, in fact, we, this paper, this, this proof is very technical, okay? In the first, first we prove that when n bigger than one, for the d equal to two, a equal to two, for d bigger than two, a equal to three, we have this, we, we first get this one, but later, the, the, Later we get a, we we find out you have a this rate that's for for this, in this plan n and l plan you get a mean n and l I have a rate okay that's different okay I'm an exact rate I'm not asymptotic you given any particular n and l not a big enough n or big enough l I have a this rate okay this uh, uh, this uh, the is the is the is uh, what the result for continuous. Uh, whatever uh, people may not be happy with that. If you are not happy with that, uh, people one of the things people say, okay, your D can be huge, but your data, your the, your function, your data may be concentrated on the around the lower dimensional ma manifold. Okay, so that's what people people like to use instead of D in the intrinsic intrinsic dimension. They, okay. That means that the uh, then can you using that? We we can. Okay. Uh, we, in the uh, same paper prove that you can uh, reduce to the data in the D of a D delta. What the D delta is? The the D delta is if if your lower dimension. Okay. The, your your D uh, the, the lower the, the lower dimensional manifold lie in the R D, and uh, the dimension say is R D D M. Then my D delta is D M time log D. So, so this it's a, it's a, it's a much smaller, okay, much smaller d. So this uh, this uh, improves, okay. 
So, 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 so our, our system for the repetitious function, and of course we can do the continuous function. And also many people always assume your data is on the lower dimensional manifold. But it's uh, realistically, we, we, our assumption is more, more practically meaningful. We assume the data in the neighborhood of the, of the uh, lower dimensional manifold. Okay, so, so this is the mathematics and uh, you can uh, uh, make it straight and make it regular. Okay, that's what, what we, we have. Now, if we are not happy with are, people are not happy, you are not happy because, because all this, you have a, a curse for dimensionality, you have a D. Okay, you have a D, people don't like to have a D. So if you are not happy with that, but the bad news is that if you continue this way, you cannot improve much because it's almost optimal. Okay, doesn't matter how smart you are, you cannot. So what do we do? So the, the only thing you can do is that you can do two things. One thing is you maybe ReLU is not the best uh, function to use, although ReLU is, uh, is the most easy one to implement. Okay, so what, what, what do you do is the easy way, you have two, two choice. One is uh, make your functions, maybe your continuous space, uh, uh, space of a continuous function or Lipschitz function is not a big space, or not, a, not a good space, it's too big. Okay, you have to reduce your space, make, make a smaller space, or you may need to change the activating function. Okay, make a, make a smaller, or uh, make a other activating function maybe can uh, serve better. Okay, that's the, that's the uh, possibility. Then let's see, let's, let's see. Let's reduce the dramatically. Instead of the, all the continuous function, we look at the polynomial. Okay, suppose I, I want to approximate function, which is a polynomial, polynomial space, which is small. Polynomial space is, a, is a great. Essentially, what we say for the polynomial of degree k, you can reach to, you see, this is the idea. You have a, this is your, basically your width. Okay, your width is big, bigger than this, basically like a width, this is your depth, this is your degree k. You kind of have an exponential kind of approximation. So, so that, that, that gives you hope. So you, if you have a function space, which is small enough, you have a good approximation. You see, this also shows the deep neural is good because your depth really dramatically improve your approximation. You see, power to the air. Air is your depth. Okay, this is your degree. Of course, if you are high degree, your net you are, will be high. Your, your depth is that, your, 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 your width is that. Okay. What do you think about that? Okay. This is uh, encouraging in many ways because you look at the classical approximation. Okay. Classical approximation all about the polynomial. Okay, what do you what do you do? You use either spline or the, all about a polynomial. That's why your no matter which approximation scheme you use, your key idea, your approximation scheme must reproduce. They call reproducing polynomial of a certain degree. Then once you have a reproduced polynomial in certain degree locally, then what do they do? They uh, mathematically they just ex do the ex Taylor expansion locally. Okay, when you do the external expansion, because this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, if a function is smooth enough, you can have a Taylor expansion, then for the first, uh, this uh, or lower order polynomial can be reproduced, then your error term come out. Okay, that's a, because all kind of observation, technically can be different, uh, depending on what kind of error you work, work in, but the key idea is that. Now, now your ReLU, your ReLU network, you cannot reproduce polynomial. Okay, you, because ReLU is a piecewise linear. You, at the most, you reproduce a polynomial, polynomial of degree one. But however, it can approximate polynomial in a cis rate. As in, if any, you can have a ReLU, or ReLU network to approximate polynomial in the N or the L, here I have power K. So that means you have a chance for have a, a good observation for the smooth function. So if you have a smooth function, you, 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 you can have a, have a this, uh, your smoothness order is S, you can have this S, okay? This, this is what it is, you have a S to the power. So your function is smooth enough, you can get rid of D, right? That's uh, that. So, 
So supposedly, say I have a suppose I, I have a C infinity function. Then then I I, I have a C for an arbitrary S. Of course, your big S, your cost, your neural network should be big. That's what your cost. Okay, that's nothing nothing else. That's what, that's essentially what your cost. Your cost is your your, your if you are, if you want to have a better flow, your neural network will be bigger. But we know exactly how big your network is. Okay, that's exactly what's the optimization power order is. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, so all those difficulties is why I say it's hard compared with other asymptotic analysis is easy. This is the hard because you want to know exactly the size of your neural, neural network. Otherwise, that doesn't mean much. Size and approximation rate. If we're comparing with the asymptotic analysis, asymptotic analysis essentially, if I want to do something, you have an infinite resource. It's just like, okay, I say, okay, I have a big enough N, big enough L. But for this one, basically, I want to do something, have a limited resource. I give you N and L. You need to reach that. Okay, that's the thing. So we all know, this, uh, your infinite resource is much easier to do the job. And you have a limited resource, you have to work hard. So this is a technical. Okay, so. Another way, either you don't want to reduce the space, you need to change the activating function. So we we have a we design a neural net. There's a you have a instead of you you only using relu, I gave you freedom into using relu or flow function. Okay, flow function you know that in x you have a the maximum integer below that x. Okay, that's the flow function. Okay. So, 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 so this is, that means each, each, each time you are either, either relo, you are free to choose, choose either of them, either of them. That's the neural net, neural network, neural net still more or less the same. Okay. So that's what I, what I did. So if you have a, have a system kind of freedom, you kind of get a, you kind of get a much better approximation. So that's what is our result. The result here is that, you, you see, if you have an N, your 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 depth is not bigger. It's only only D L, and your 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 width also not big. Only five N plus thirteen or D maximum of that. So your rate, you can look look, look at this easy. Easy to look at the Lipsch, uh, hold, hold continuous rate is uh, you see, you have a alpha to the square root of N. L. Almost okay. It's it's exponential. So it's a, this is a, that means this approximation scheme has a no curse for dimensionality. Okay, because this D is here. It's a, you just add a little bit of depth, you really kill this D easily. Okay, this, uh, this, uh, this, is a, this is a super, super powerful approximation scheme. So, so to summarize, conclude, what I'm talking here is that Okay, if you want to understand the supervised deep learning neural network, the key is to, uh, to control the three errors. When is the op optimization error, when is the generalization error, and when is the approximation error. Okay, what we did here, we, we, we found, in fact, in our pool, we all have an approximator. But in fact, we have an approximator. You, theoretically, we construct an approximator if you have a function. Okay, you look at our proof, we theoretically construct an approximator. But as a, this approximator, you, you, you through the approximator, you know the L bound because this L will be smaller than this L. Also, this L is not far away from this L because this is optimal, almost optimal. Okay, so, so the, the if, if you don't have this set of results in your hand, you can do whatever effort you use, this effort, say your, your improve algorithm, improve your algorithm, you can reduce this error. You can improve your model to in, reduce this error. That's whatever effort, that's what the statistics, statistical learning doing, that's what the optimization doing. But with, without this control of this error, whatever you do, you only say you can control the error for when you approximate a function which is in your hypothesis space. That's never happened, okay? You, you always uh, approximate a function in some of your, out of your hypothesis space, okay? So that's why the approximation error, a study of approximation 
approximation error is important. Okay, with this, I finish my talk. Thank you. Okay, so thanks, uh, Professor Shen, for the very wonderful talk. I really like the plot a lot because uh, it makes a lot of things quite crystal clear, the plot you have. Okay, so let me pause a recording. So I would like to welcome questions from the audience.